Welcome to today's talk session. My name is Deidre Moss and I'm the host of Can We Talk with Deidre Moss. I'm an educator, motivator, and a talk connoisseur. For our session today, we will be talking about sexual health awareness as September is Sexual Health Awareness Month. We've invited Denise Major, a sexual health and rights advocate, educator, to help us dissect this topic. At this time, I will pass the virtual mic to our guest so that she can introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Denise Major. And as Deidre said, I'm a sexual health and rights educator and advocate. So what that really means is I talk about sex all day and every day. <laughs> when I tell clients that they find that so abusing, like, really, don't you get board no it's it's there's so many aspects to cover most people think it's just talking about the act the act itself and penetration but it's so much more um we talk about mental health physical health emotional health all of it is a part of sexual health so that's a brief nutshell of what i do <laughs> Thank you so much, Denise. And Denise is a friend to our platform, so I'm just excited to have her back. Um, so welcome again. Before we begin, if you just joined us, like and share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel using the links on our page. We need your support to continue these talks. Also, if you want to sponsor or advertise on our platform, contact us using the number listed on our page. If there's something that you want us to talk about or you think we should be talking about, feel free to let us know. We want to hear from you. With that, let's get into our talk. Let's get into our talk. So uh, background, Denise, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, I've been working in the field of sexual health for the last maybe 10 years, a little over 10 years, um, mostly in the realm of health education. But as of late, in the last five, six years, we have delved more into rights, um, legal issues, um, stuff like that. So like I said, I go into the schools, I go into communities, I go into organizations, into the clinics, and we just help dissect the topic, like you said, pretty much what we're doing now. So this is a part of my platform as well, just educating the public on various aspects of se sexual health and rights. Thank you so much. Thank you, Denise. Um, so why is it important for Okay, so we have some minor technical difficulties. We, we are back. Um, so why is it important to bring attention to uh, sexual health awareness? Well, for the most part, sexual health is a major part of our world, personal wellness. Um, that's how we got here. <laughs> I mean, the ways in, t in which you take care of yourself sexually can make a major difference in, a, in the quality of the life that you have. So when you talk about sexual health, we talk about... Um, how we navigate our relationships. We talk about pregnancy, we talk about birth, we talk about sexually transmitted diseases, we talk about access to healthcare. And of course, we also talk about pleasure. So all of those things are major components in our lives. So it's important to have these conversations. Definitely, definitely. And um, as it pertains to sexual health again, what should an individual do to take control of their sexual health? They should show some interest. It's disturbing the amount of people who are so focused on pleasure that they forget the other side of it. So they sh we should be ensuring that we're getting our annual physicals done, um, getting all our regular screenings, regular screenings done, inclusive of all the SDIs, um, chlamydia, 
gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV. Um, we should be getting these things done at a minimum annually. Um, use condoms, use birth control. All of these things empower us to take control of our sexual health, get treatments for associated illness and, and ad adhere to the medication. Not just find out, oh, I have erectile dysfunction. Oh, I have some SCI. Oh, I have endometriosis or, you know, something, but actually get treatment and adhere to the medication. And then just continuously learn, it, learn about your bodies um, and the, the various risk factors as we get older. We may say, oh, I'm in my 30s, I know it all. No, <laughs> it's going to change. <laughs> and it's going to change every five to 10 years or so. We are all different. So that continuous learning about our bodies is very important as well. I want to thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think sometimes, you know, we feel we get comfortable. Uh, very. We get mm -hmm. comfortable. Yeah. And so we don't do our annual testing and, and all those important things that we, we should be doing, especially if you're sexually active. So let me ask you, even if you're not sexually active, is it still important for you to get your annual testing done? Well, your annual screening. So for women, we yeah. still have to get our pop spares, our mammograms and stuff like that. All of that is a part of sexual health, getting those testings done. But I tell people all the time, um, do it annually anyway, just so that you're comfortable doing it. If I know I do this June of every year, whether I'm sexually active or not, June of every year, I'm going to be tested and screened for everything, um, whether I'm in a relationship or not. Interesting, interesting. Because I know some people they say, you know, I'm fine. I don't, I don't need to, you know, even if you're you're feeling fine, they say I'm fine. I don't need to get tested or. And how do you feel about persons who are, you know, in a relationship with someone and they say, you know, they they indicate that they would like for them to get testing, but that person is giving them resistance. That's a that's a red flag within itself. And that's a red flag within itself. If we are in a relationship, a sexual relationship, and I'm asking you to be tested, why are you hesitant about being tested? What do you have to hide? It should be like nothing to go and get tested, especially if you're in a monogamous relationship. It's just me and you. Hey, let's go get tested. Or even before you start a relationship, really, before you become intimate with someone, we really should be getting these tests done. And the minute he or she says, oh, I, I don't need that done nothing's happening. I'm sorry. That's the biggest red flag. It's not the circus. It's a red flag. Run. Stay away. Don't do it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about initiatives um, that okay. you may be doing or initiatives that your department is doing. Okay, so upcoming initiatives. Next week, Friday, that's September 30th, there will be a testing and health screening at UWI's campus by at Princess Margaret Hospital. So when you go into the main gate off of Shirley Street, right to the left in the grassy area from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's UWI's um, women's testing and initiative, but it's open to the general public. Anyone is invited to attend. That's September 30th. On October 7th, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., we're going to be at the Golden Gate Shopping Plaza. That's right on the bus stop. We, we usually set up between Wendy's in Kentucky in the bus stop area and Golden Gate Shopping Plaza. And this is going to be the first time we're really doing an evening testing in a long time. We realize with that area, normally we do testings early in the day. And when we're wrapping up, we have a whole a lot of people coming in to get tested. So we said, no, let's switch it up. We're going to be testing from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. to give those who are taking a late lunch or getting off from work time to come in and get tested. So those are the, the next two major initiatives we have coming up. September 30th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at UWI by the hospital. And then October 7th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, at the Golden Gates Shopping Plaza. So is testing free? Testing in the Bahamas is free of charge and at our events, they are definitely free. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that information. Okay, so you said it's going to be in October? Yeah, yes. the first one is next week, Friday, which is September 30th. 
And then the following one is October 7th. Both are Fridays. And at the same place? No, you, two different places. So UWI is September 30th, hospital, and October 7th at Golden Gate Shopping Plaza in the parking lot area between Kentucky and Wendy. So we're right in the parking lot and it's open to the public. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. No um, problem. So <laughs> we're moving quite quickly and I do apologize. I, we came in, we came a little bit early. As I know, I was checking the comments to see if uh, we had any comments. I'll come back to those. And if anyone, you know, if you come across that video, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your, your questions in the comment section. Uh, we will get back to you. Um, um, and so we, we came a little bit early today. Um, we got some things going on today, uh, but we'll be back <laughs> at our original five o'clock time spot. Um, so we've arrived at our fast talk segment. Um, so you are, <laughs> I love your reaction. I love that. <laughs> but I don't have the reactions. Thank you. Okay. I love seeing <laughs> so we've arrived at our fast talk segment. You have about 60 seconds to answer each question. Um, okay. First question. Are you satisfied with the level of awareness regarding sexual health in the Bahamas? Really? First question? <laughs> okay. Am I satisfied? Personally, I'm not. I feel as though there's always more that we can do and we should be doing. Um, but in terms of the public's response as well, I would like for us to take it a bit more seriously. Um, since the pandemic came, everyone was concerned about COVID. We're getting back to normal. We need to be concerned about other issues related to our health now. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I'm a bit concerned. Not quite satisfied. <laughs> um, how often should an individual be tested for HIV AIDS? HIV, okay. You know, yeah. Uh, tested for HIV. So that depends on their risk factors. So if I own one partner, and we're in a monogamous relationship and I feel secure, we both feel secure, I would say once a year. If you have multiple partners, multiple times a year, and that could be every three to six months. So it depends on your risk factors. Um, so multiple partners every three to six months, if you don't trust your partner, every three to six months. And if you're in a monogamous faithful relationship and you have no issues, once a year is sufficient. So no matter what, you should be getting tested though. And I, I know I asked you earlier, but do you think it's fair to ask someone that you're considering dating or someone that you're dating, you may not be sexually active with them, but you, you want to ask them, hey, is it okay for us to get tested for HIV AIDS together? Do you think it's Absolutely. fair to ask that question? Absolutely, because you don't know where it's going to lead. And that's a part of the dating process. And the getting to know you stage is when you should be getting these things done. So if you're if you have, if you see some potential in this person, then yeah, of course you should go get tested and let's go together. I'm not just asking him to go get tested. We're both going to get tested um, so that both of our, there's some ease of mind on both ends. So absolutely. <laughs> what should an individual do if they receive a positive result? Okay, so upon receiving a positive HIV result, I would say get linked to care immediately. HIV diagnosis in 2022 was not what it was in 1983. It's no longer that sentence. And that's the reality of it. The sooner you get on treatment, the sooner you get on care, the sooner you get um, linked care, the sooner you can continue on with a healthy life, a healthy normal life. Um, services that are provided at the HIV center, free medication, free treatment, free counseling, um, and again, notice I'm saying free behind all of these things. There's really no excuses and everything is confidential. So the, as soon as you receive a positive result, get linked to care. Is an individual with HIV uh, required to disclose their status immediately or, or can an individual be charged with intentionally transmitting HIV or AIDS in the Bahamas? To, okay. to sexual partner. Okay, so this is a tricky question. And this is going to take more than 60 seconds, I think. Um, legally, because there is a law on the books for it, 
a person with AIDS has to disclose their status to a sexual partner. If they transmit the, um, transmit the virus, they can be charged. So legally, they should disclose their status. We encourage our patients to do so, but the difficulty with that is um, fear of stigma and discrimination. So I may disclose to my partner today, and it may not be a serious partner, and my business be out in the streets all about by tomorrow. <laughs> so it, that, it's, it's a tricky situation, but legally you should disclose, but we understand where it would take some time. So in the meantime, you should be using condoms. At every inter interaction, condoms should be used. Um, and as you get to know that person, at some point you should disclose. Um, but like I said, according to the law, you can be charged if it's found that you passed the virus on someone. Thank you. And as we wind down to come to the end of our session, is there any additional comments you would like to, to add? Um, pretty much, I just want to encourage persons to, like I said, take their sexual health. It is Sexual Health Awareness Month. Um, be more passionate about it. And I, I use the word passionate intentionally. <laughs> uh, be more concerned about your sexual health. And as an educator, I find myself talking so much about the the health side of it and the risk side of it. But there's pleasure, there's pleasure also. It doesn't have to be so doom and gloom all the time. So we have to remember that there's balance in everything. Um, get tested, get your annual screenings done, use condoms, use birth control, all of that good stuff. <laughs> Thank you for, for sharing that. And, and just going back through the comments, I see um, Julian would have posted a question. So he probably would have missed the first half. Um, so okay. he asks, what is sexual health? Oh, we're back to that. <laughs> okay, so sexual health really covers a lot of topics. It covers your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, your sexual well-being. Um, we talk about mental health. So it's just a major part of your personal wellness, so to speak. So everything as it relates to sexual reproduction, the act of sex itself, um, relationships, navigating relationships. We talk about consent. We talk about a whole lot of things when it comes to sexual health. So those are just some things that covered under it, covering the a total being of a person, mental, emotional, and physical. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Denise, for being so <laughs> transparent with us today. We know, you know, some this can be a personal topic for some yeah. persons. It's not easy to have the conversation about sexual health um, and sexual health awareness. Um, but we need to have this discussion, especially for younger persons um, as well. And I know, um, do you, you guys go into the schools as well? Most definitely. We go into the schools and I want to encourage parents to Begin having the conversation with your children. They are exposed daily. And it's not necessarily hardcore sexual stuff, but they're exposed in music. They're exposed by the things that they watch, that they see on TV, and just in hearing conversations of the, from their other parents. So speak to your children and find out what they know. Um, and the older they are, the more deeper the conversations and the more real the conversations should be. I still have quite a few parents who feel as though their teens who have cell phones aren't exposed. <laughs> they have a cell phone, they're exposed. <laughs> they don't even need a cell phone to be exposed, but having that cell phone and that access to the internet, they are exposed. So I want to encourage parents to not wait until the topic comes up in school because it is sexual health and family life is a part of our school curriculum. Don't wait till it comes up in school. Start to have your conversations with your children so they know your expectations. They know what you expect of them um, and your boundaries that you want to set for them as well. It should come from home first. I got, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think sometimes it's kind of difficult to have those type of conversations and have those discussions and then yeah. sometimes you may feel like maybe they're not like how do you 
how do you determine when is the right time to have the discussion with the child? You know, when is an appropriate time? At what age should you be having this discussion? And I think that, you know, maybe in a different time, you, children may not have been exposed to that much, but we definitely live in a time where you could just pick up the phone and, you know, uh, pick up anything. And so it's very important to have those discussions. I think sometimes we may, we may want to avoid those discussions, but is it, do, you would want to be the one to reach your child to give them the yeah. right information than for someone else to get to them first. Um, with avoiding the is doing more damage. Avoiding is doing more damage than good. And I think a lot of parents, because they're so, our, our parents nowadays with children who are ready for this conversation are their late twenties and their thirties and up. Our parents, most of our parents didn't have the conversation with us. So we don't even know how to begin. And sometimes when we have the conversation, it's a fair tactic and, oh, don't you do this. And, we're, you know, it's about finding balance. And that's also one of the services that we offer where we can help you have these conversations. And it's just, it doesn't have to be some sit down and open the book. If you're in the car with your child and you hear something, what are your thoughts? on this like what does that mean if you're watching a cartoon we have cartoons that are overly sexual the, the shows that they watch i use love and hip-hop and all these shows as examples all the times they display the most toxic relationships find out from your child if they're watching these shows what they think about these things and then you know how to guide the conversation for our younger children we should be teaching them body parts this is penis. This is a vagina. This is who should be touching these things. If someone makes you feel uncomfortable, what do you do? All of this is a part of sexual health. And it begins from as young as two when you're, when you're introducing your child to their body parts. When you're talking to them, oh, how to clean your body parts correctly. All of this is a part of sexual health. But like I said, for the most part, we only think about penetration. We don't think about all these things and associate them with sexual health and well-being. All of these things are a part of it. Well, I mean, for me, when you when you mentioned that age, I'm like, who? Oh, and, oh, that's your lala. That's your poopy. That's your wow. Like these stupid things. Like yeah. stop. This is your penis. This is your vagina. Yeah. And that is the beginning of the conversation. Oh, so you don't you don't do those pet names and no, those... we don't do that nonsense. Oh, okay. No. We Even don't. Two... No, we don't. <laughs> oh wow. It's penis and vagina. Okay. Wow. The flips not only it's just teaching them bad habits, but God forbid something happens to that child and they have to go to court and some oh someone touched my cookie. A defense attorney would tear that child to pieces oh, wow. and they're doing their job and that's their job to do so. Oh, wow. So it's important to, to show that, hey, you understand this is what this is. Mm. No one is supposed to touch you here. If someone touches you here and it makes you feel uncomfortable, say something. Mm -hmm. This is inappropriate. So all of these conversations start from that young and it continues this ongoing conversation. It's not a one and done conversation. The conversation continues throughout. My daughter is 23 and we still have conversations. <laughs> Our conversations are much different, um, but it doesn't stop. Parenting and these type of conversations never ends. Definitely, definitely. Um, and I know it, it may be an un uncomfortable conversation, but they definitely, these are the conversations that need to be had. And you yeah. want it coming from a trusted adult rather than, you know, someone who may not give the information that the child needs. So uh, are there any additional comments? Would you like to share uh, where you're going to be having the um, testing and screenings before we close out our session? Would you like to share that again? Okay, so just another reminder. The first one is next week, Friday, that's September 30th on UWI's campus, the University of West Indies. So if you're coming into PMH from Shirley Street, it's right to the left in the grassy area. You are not, there's music, there's tents, you won't miss us. We will be there in full force. That's September 30th from 10 to 2 p.m. And the next one is October 7th at Golden Gate Shopping Plaza. So that's the plaza on Golden Gate, right at the entrance of Carmichael Road, where Super Value, Kentucky, 
um, Wendy's, all these things are opposite Southwest Plaza. So we're gonna be right in that area from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and testing is free of charge. So come on by and get tested. Awesome, awesome, good stuff. So I just checked this the comment section again before we close out. This is our last comment. I think this person is having some fun today. So the question <laughs> is, how much sex is too much sex? That's the, that depends on you and your partner. If y'all sex several times a day all day and y'all capable of doing it, go for it. But everyone is different. There's no set plan for, for anyone, any individual. It depends on you and your partner. Thank you so much, Denise, for joining us in this session today. You are our friend. You've been so transparent with us today. You are welcome back anytime. And thank you for sharing those awesome initiatives to really, you know, ensure that we get those screenings available and they're free of charge uh, for individuals who are interested in uh, checking on their, their sexual health. So I want to thank our viewers for listening in. Thank you for listening to our talk. I would like to thank our guest, Denise Major. I would like to thank our viewers for listening in, like our page for future notifications of upcoming talks. Comment under our videos, let us know your thoughts and let us know what you want us to talk about. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Can We Talk with Deidre Moss. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter using the addresses provided on our page. Thank you and let's remember to think, talk, do. Thank you so much.